everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather and today I'm here to talk you through my May TBR. It doesn't really feel like May here, it's still very cold and it's been very grey and unseasonable recently, but I'm really excited about these books so I'm hoping that brings a little bit of sunshine and warmth, even if Mother Nature is not. Firstly, I like to try to read one non-fiction book every month. So I thought for my nonfiction book, I would pick Gullible's Travels by Billy Connolly. I tracked this down recently. It is extremely hard to find, but these are some of his observations as he traveled the world as a stand-up comedian towards the beginning of his career. And honestly, these last couple of weeks of the school year are going to be really tough. It's going to be really hard making it through May and half of June. So I need a little hilarity in my life. Then on to classics. I tried to read at least one classic per month. This year I've been tackling one D.E. Stevenson book per month. So in May I'm up to Listening Valley, which I know very little about, except that it might be a kind of follow-on from Celia's house. So I'm going to pick this up next. These are, if you've never read any D.E. Stevenson, these are lovely, cozy, or they're centered on female stories and female experiences in Britain, mainly during the 1920s and 30s. Then another classic I hope to pick up is Diary of a Provincial Lady by E.M. Delafield. I've had this for ages, I've had the sequel for even longer. And Claire Fenby mentioned it on her channel recently as something that she'd like to read in the spring, so I thought I'd put it on my TBR as well. As far as I know, and I'm going to double check this because I have gotten it wrong in the past, as far as I know, this was written in the 1930s and it parodies the diary of a provincial lady and kind of makes fun of everyday life, I think? The text on the flap was quite funny at least, so I'm hoping it becomes more clear as I read it. Persephone really should blurb their books in addition to giving you a taste of the writer's style. Then once I finish my current audiobook, to give me something cozy to listen to at work, I'm hoping to start the audiobook for Can You Forgive Her by Anthony Trollope. These have been my go-to comfort listens this year. I debated reading some of his standalones or starting the Palisers, and I decided, you know what, let's give myself another series to work through, because that will get me through a long time, and I'm really looking forward to spending even more of that time with Sir Timothy West reading me these wonderful Victorian adventures. Then in terms of other books I might enjoy, I'm hoping to continue the A Court of Thorns and Roses series with the next book, which for me is A Court of Frost and Starlight. These are possibly one of the first, if not the quintessential, fey romance series. Many more have come since, and I quite like them. They're a fun bit of book candy. The characters are gaining a lot of depth, and yeah, they're just fun. Then I also hope to pick up The Square of Sevens by Laura Shepard Robinson. I have loved her other two books so far, so I'm really excited to read this one. This, I think, is not connected at all to the other two. This one takes place in the 1730s. It starts in Cornwall and then goes to London, where Red, I believe, is a fortune teller, but somehow she works her way up the ladders of society and all the while is trying to find out who her father was. That sounds like everything I want in a book. And then finally, I said I was going to read Mrs. Porter Calling in February, and then never did, so I'm hoping to come back to it this time. This is A.J. Pierce's third book in the Emmy Lake series, which started with Dear Mrs. Bird a few years ago. So I can't tell you too much about this one, but it does still follow Emmy and her career in journalism in London during World War II. I also have two ARC copies, well one definitely, possibly another, that I need to get through this month, as well as my current audiobook, so I'm gonna say that's enough to be getting on with for now. If you particularly love any of these books and want me to push them towards the top of my TBR, do let me know. I always find that inspiring and exciting 
If you didn't love any of them, don't tell me yet. Wait for my wrap up and then we can have a good discussion about whether or not I agree with you. Let me know what you are planning to read in March. I always struggle to read with the seasons in terms of books that have to do with the season. None of these are particularly spring-like books, but to me they feel spring-like in their lightness and in terms of theme at least. I don't really know where I'm going with this sentence, but if you read seasonally, let me know down below and that might give me some good ideas. Until next time, be safe, be well, and happy reading. Bye everyone.